Trevor's sad. Yes, I am. Can't ride bikes. Welcome to another episode of our untitled vlog. If you've got a name suggestion for us, leave us a comment. Be nice. If you're gonna be mean, be clever. Don't make it personal. What are we doing today? Um, we're gonna be talking about cyclocross bikes. Or gravel bikes. Something in between, maybe? Or can gravel bikes be cyclocross bikes? And cool. can cyclocross bikes be gravel bikes? I suspect people will have something to say about that. I was also really happy with how much feedback we got from the last episode. I think what really resonated with folks was kind of the death of mechanical shifting, kind of rim brakes being phased out of top tier road groups. Mm -hmm. And we kind of wanted to point people towards a really great article that our colleague Matt Phillips wrote. I'm Everesting, Everesting. We're gonna link it in the description. Check it out, it's worth your time. It's a really great perspective kind of from the industry side of what's happening and what's driving the changes that we're seeing, essentially. Right. Before we go too in depth on what is in that article, let's get back to the topic at hand today. We're riding some cool bikes today. If you wanna learn more about those bikes, we're gonna have some more links uh, below. Um, you might actually be able to buy some of those right now if you're fast. Fingers crossed. Uh, and then we, we got a, a really in-depth guide to just general gravel riding, racing, a right. bit of everything. It's a really... It's basically everything you need if you are curious about starting to ride gravel or if you just simply want to spice up your gravel riding. We're going to head to our local Thursday night cyclocross race practice here in PA. Uh, it's called Fifth Street. Check it out. We're going to go ride some bikes with some friends. We're going to talk about some bikes with some friends. It'll be a good time. I wanted to start in a very familiar to me place, which is a Richard Sachs cyclocross bike. I actually podiumed a UCI race on this in 2019. I think still most people, when you say cyclocross bike, think of something like this. Cantilevers, tubulars, etc. One by. One by. I don't think you could really race gravel on this bike. But why not? One bottle cage for one. Okay. When I was on the team, I couldn't fit like 35s. Yeah, so, not, so, so not a ton of tire clearance. Not optimal for gravel. Yeah, but very optimal for cross. Very fast for cross. Very fast. But obviously not a mass, mass produced thing. Also not trying to market itself as a gravel bike, which this bike is definitely just trying to market itself as a gravel bike these days. It's a really good gravel bike, actually. I mean, it won Unbound Gravel under Ted King in 2018 in a previous form. It was a Super X, which you still have. Yes but they haven't really changed the geometry at all. They've added a bit of tire clearance. So the idea is almost take what's successful from the road side of things, keep the geometry, which was also proven to be successful as a gravel bike and a cyclocross bike, and merge it into one bike. It's an interesting concept, but I will say that Cannondale is at least being pretty upfront that this is a bike that you can race cyclocross yeah. on. And then there's this thing, which is a lot, on so many levels. It's got a dropper post, it's got a suspension fork. We did put cross tires on it. But this one is not a cyclocross bike. No. This is a gravel bike, but we wanna know, can a gravel bike be a cyclocross bike? Yeah, essentially. Basically, we're being told that cyclocross bikes are now gravel bikes, so we wanna know if gravel bikes are also cyclocross bikes. I don't really, I, it's... It'll work. Yeah, I think my theory is that it'll be slower 90% of the time and then the other 10% of the time it'll be really fun. I think everyone's kind of heard about underbiking. This is definitely overbiking for cyclocross. I guess the reason why this is here is to kind of show what larger brands are kind of moving away from. Yeah. You can't really find a bike this purpose built for cyclocross in a store or from any major manufacturer. But also to be fair, I took this bike bike camping and it was totally fine. I wore a camelback and had a saddlebag and... Now you're contradicting our whole process. Sorry. I'm shaking my head because I don't want to do that. 
No. I mean, it wasn't the most comfortable geometry for an overnight. You're a brave soul, Clem. I'm you're... a brave soul. And I was also working with what I had, which was a cyclocross bike. And right. I didn't want to buy a gravel bike. I day. brought a knife to a gunfight. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever That's works. Fine. Yeah, it works. It's cool. You got, you got some UCI cross races coming up, and you'll be bringing a knife to a knife fight. A beautiful, bespoke, handmade knife to a knife fight. I think you actually had the best bike for this course, which is really funny because I didn't think that going into it, only because this course is so bumpy. Oh my God. It's funny, I ended up looking at this at first saying, this is way too much bike for this course, but then getting into that back section, yeah. It was a lot of roots and a lot of downed everything and it helped take the cheddar off a bit. I think the other thing too, the dropper post, I ended up using not to drop the post, but because it has a little bit of suspension in it. Right. And on those long flat sections in the back, you can just kind of let it hover a little bit. And that was good. Is that always active or can you turn that on? You have to compress it just a little tiny okay. bit. I mean, I still, I still contend that this bike is slower 90% of the time. It's just we're at a practice course that's at a, what is this, a recycling center, a mulch pile? All of the above. All of the above. It's yeah, a, it's very it's bumpy. It's a multi-use facility. It's kind of like this is a multi-use bicycle. Yes. Clever. Yeah, so it's not a cyclocross bike, but does it cyclocross? It can cyclocross. I think in the horses for courses type thing, sure. um, this might be the right horse for this course. It is funny though, when you start to ride it and you get into it and you start to push it, you realize that some of the cyclocross aspects of this bike hold it back, like the 33 millimeter tires. Uh. Where you start to push into the corner because you have the suspension and you can't because your tires are limited by 33, or in this case, 34 millimeters Our of width. Swiss overlords. Yes, so. That's a, that's a segment for a different UCI day. Joke. Yeah, the question of if you had only one bike and you already have an existing gravel bicycle, I would say a to the extreme gravel bicycle, can you come out here, race some cyclocross and have some fun? Heck yeah. And I think that's the that's the big thing. If you if do you want to compete at the pointy edge of a UCI field? Is this the optimal bike? More than likely not. That's fair. I'd say that's fair. Uh, how is it compared to your first mountain bike with suspension? And just for context, yeah. Tara's been riding and creating mountain bikes since what? No, uh, I think I first started riding mountain bikes in 92 or 93. Okay. So my first mountain bike had uh, about the same amount of travel as this. This is probably uh, about two pounds lighter than my first mountain bike. The bars actually might be a little bit wider than my first mountain bike because we used to cut everything short. But that's actually, I was, I was out there riding today and I was thinking, what is the first bike I raced some cyclocross races on? And it was a hardtail mountain bike because that's what you used to do. It, it does not feel as snappy as my old Super X's did. Sure. And you would come out of a corner and the Super X would just stand up and, and you would pedal away. I mean, I think we also clocked this in at what, like almost 10 kilos? Yeah, it's 9.4, I think. So it's not, yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's still chonkers. Yeah, I don't, I can't convert kilos to pounds in my head, but we'll just like put that in here oh, somewhere. It's like 20 yeah, pounds. We'll, it's like a mountain bike. Yeah, it's like a modern XC hardtail. XC hardtail. Yeah. Weight wise. But that's what this is. I feel like Pat's just rolling his eyes at us. Pat's mad because of how much he's gonna have to cut. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like what makes a gravel bike a gravel bike? What makes a cross bike a cross bike? But like, is there really, there's no clear line anymore. A lot of different bikes could be a do-it-all bike. Sure, I mean, there's, you know, most high-end road race bikes at this point, what, clear 32s, 33? Yeah. I think your With Cannondale Evo road bike, what, 35s? Yeah, 35s with enough space that, like, you're not worried about it. So, right. like, you could theoretically take that bike onto a cross course. Would it be fun? I don't know yet. 
definitely ride can ride gravel on it. I mean, yeah. I remember when we all rode gravel on 28s. Even 25s, when 25 was a gravel tire. Yeah, I remember putting 25s on for bat and kill, being like, yeah, gravel race. Yeah. Well, better pull out the tubeless 25s. <laughs> oh, please. Nobody <laughs> ran tubeless when bat and kill was a thing. Yeah, they did. Hutchinson Intensives. Anyway, back to like, <laughs> these brands now are marketing these bikes in a way that they're almost telling the consumer that all of their bikes could do it all for them. With this bike, they're telling you you're not really giving up much in the aerodynamic department compared to their flagship road bike. I think it's like three watts or yeah. something like that Which they quoted. Put on a skin suit and sure, you got those watts back. Yeah. Do a little bit of extra exercise and maybe you'll get the watts back. <sighs> but anyway, like you could comfortably say like, I'm gonna race this bike in every race I do, road or cross or yeah. gravel and have just one bike. But is that really the answer? Will the one bike quiver be a thing? I don't think so. It's an intriguing thought experiment for sure. I feel like with a bike like this, we're certainly getting to the realm where, yeah, you could conceivably race road, cross, and gravel on one bike. Mm -hmm. Like just you a, know, a Gino few, does it. Yeah, a few minor tweaks here and there. Theoretically have this bike built up with a one by setup for your cross season, pull a crank off, take a derailleur off, one by cyclocross bike, throw a spacer under the stem if you want to get a little bit more relaxed. I think what you're saying is, is the line is getting blurred. Yes. Maybe the, the thing to point out is the thing that's getting blurred out is cyclocross. Right, exactly. Like, you probably, I, I would guess for the most part, there will be companies out there that within the next few years, you will not be able to find a cyclocross bike on yeah. their website for sale. You'll be able to find something that's like a gravel race bike, right. which is something like this, but you might not see a cyclocross bike. Purpose I mean, you're, built you're, cyclocross bike. You're already bike seeing anymore. it from a lot of the newer brands, they don't even make. A cyclocross bike. We started 10 years ago with fitting bigger, bigger tires in our cross bikes to race gravel, and now we're fitting smaller and smaller tires in our gravel bikes to race cyclocross. Yeah. Well, some of us are. I don't, not everybody, obviously. But that's, yeah. you know, yeah. I guess I mean, let us know what you think in the comments in terms of uh, cyclocross, gravel, yeah. gravel cyclocross. Defend cyclocross. Or, you know, mercilessly make fun of it because yeah. it's a really very, very silly sport. Basically. It's super fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we love it. It's the most yeah. fun. It's yeah. the most fun way to race a bike. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Trevor's sad. Make Trevor happy. Go, go race cyclocross. Or just make me mad. Yeah. Or, or, or make fun of us in the comments. That's yeah. fine. That's fine, too. Fucking bugs. I, is that it? it just, uh, I mean, it could be.